Hey, this is Vince Omega, and in this video, I'm going to give you a demonstration of how the Sister Rami transformation works. Yeah, I know, it's, it's a bit late, and the transformation events already ended in the game, but I actually have video of all of them, so I'm going to upload them and explain them one by one. Okay, so the skill on key A, uh, the one with birds, it shoots birds. She um, summons three birds from a portal. Uh, they act like summons, and they fly around until they hit a target. I mean, to locate a target, then they swoop down and attack that target. It's um, your attack with the least cooldown, and it doesn't do the most damage. There's other attacks that do more damage in it, but it's pretty useful. Now, the skill on Key S actually teleports enemies towards you. Now, I know this sounds a bit counterproductive, but this summon is actually geared towards party play more than solo play. So what this does basically allows enemies to be teleported near you, and if you happen to be near the party, the party can actually attack them. So this is essentially a grouping skill. So like I said, it's pretty useful if you're in a group. The skill on key D works similar to um, one of the thief skills where they basically summon a bunch of blades. Well, actually, it's not a thief skill. It's more of a necromancer ability, but they summon a bunch of blades and they shoot at fours. Now, your move is actually slower than the necromancer's version of it, unless you happen to use the next skill. Now I'm about to talk about it, actually. Um, but anyway, basically, summon with blades, shoot it towards your foes, and this is actually your strongest attack. Now, the next skill on key F summons a bunch of flower petals. Now, I know what you're thinking. Flower petals? That doesn't sound very threatening. Well, the Men Master Awakening has um, flower petals for their strongest attack, and it's pretty powerful. So, despite the fact that there's flower petals, this is actually a pretty useful attack for attacking groups. Any enemy that walks into one of the flower petals will experience uh, damage. Uh, a moderate amount of damage, not more than the blades. Focus on a single target, but a good amount of damage. Now, the next two skills control time, and it's basically the main use for this particular transformation. Now, on key G, you've got the, the time ability that actually speeds up your party. Um, it gives you about, I think, 50% more attack speed. No, not 50. About 100% more attack speed, probably. So it makes you twice as fast for a short amount of time. And you can you pretty much have free range to do what you want. Oh, and this also has to be your lowest um, cooldown uh, for a skill. Like this will actually cool down faster than the first block really. And then the last attack, which also has the longest cooldown, is basically the inverse of your last attack. So that's you know your party it slows down your foes. Basically, it stops them. So basically, for the last two abilities, think about Final Fantasy and the two main time attacks: haste and stop. This is pretty much DFO's version of, it, of haste and stop. And lastly, on the top of the hot skill bar, on the right hand side, you will see an icon that looks like the Sister Ramsey transformation um, going backwards. And that's exactly what it does, it's a basic backstop for the Sister Ramsey transformation, or Remy transformation. Um, basically, if you press the jump key, she moves backwards. Basically, you use this dodge. But you'll be so fast most of the time because you'll probably be spamming haste that you won't really need this. I know I don't use it, so. Oh, and in case you're wondering, um, the fact that I have this transformation fighting on stage is with um, octopus monsters is not coincidental. Not at all. I'm pretty sure you can get, you know, engage the connection between a magical girl and tentacle monsters. Um, but I leave that to you and your perverted imagination. 